Albert Clock and Custom House Square. Sited near to where Queen Victoria and Prince Albert alighted to an enthusiastic reception from the loyal citizens of Belfast in 1849, the Albert Clock is one of Belfast's most distinctive landmarks. Prince Albert of Saxe Coburg Gotha had married his cousin Queen Victoria in 1840 and was given the title of Prince Consort in 1857. When he died four years later of typhoid fever, Queen Victoria was overwhelmed with grief and remained in mourning for the rest of her life. As its own tribute, Belfast decided, in 1861, to erect the Albert Memorial Clock, which was funded by public subscription. Its beginnings were marred in controversy when Belfast's most eminent Victorian architect, Sir Charles Lanyon, secretly used his influence to deprive the winner of the architectural competition to design it, William J. Barr, of his prize, and it was awarded instead to Lanyon's firm. However, a public outcry ensured the award reverted to Barr. The memorial was completed in 1869. Local wits point out that the Albert clock not only has the time, but the inclination too. This is because the 2,000 ton tower, built on reclaimed land using timber piles, was too much of a load and the building settled. The list was so pronounced, it became known as the Leaning Tower of Belfast, a regal version of its rival in Pisa. The Albert, as it was known locally, was a survivor withstanding the Belfast Blitz of World War II and the IRA's bombs of the Troubles, as well as the attention of New Year revellers who gathered there and crashed bottles against the base when midnight chimed. By the 1990s, the clock's condition was a major concern, and a restoration scheme was undertaken which refurbished the monument to its former glory and stabilised the tilt using a new piling system. Today, a pristine statue of the Prince Albert looks up High Street supremely confident that his old problem with piles has been cured. Sir Charles Lanyon might not have got his way with the Albert Memorial, but he did design the beautiful Customs House, which dominates the adjacent square, and which for a period was the workplace of the prolific writer Anthony Trollope, who wrote his first successful novel, The Warden, while he was in Belfast. Trollope worked for the post office, during which time he introduced the pillar box, hence the term, a man of letters. From the steps of the Customs House, Belfast's Speaker's Corner, 19th and early 20th century Protestant preachers and trade union orators harangued and admonished the crowds in the square. It was here in 1907 that James Big Jim Larkin, the dock labour organiser, addressed crowds of up to 20,000 during a bitter strike which saw violent clashes between dockers and the military and police. Refurbished at a cost of £4.5 million in 2005, Custom House Square is again an exciting outdoor venue, regularly graced by live concerts, street entertainment, theatre and major festivals. It has also hosted everything from strongman competitions and beach volleyball to pirate carnivals. It's brought to life by a range of quirky art pieces, a fantastic water feature which follows the line of the river Farset, which runs beneath the city, and the historic Calder Memorial Fountain, which was erected in memory of Francis Anderson Calder R.N. 1788 to 1855. He was the founder of the Belfast, later Ulster, Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, and from 1843 he was instrumental in introducing horse troughs in Belfast to provide water for working horses. His example was followed by London and other cities, and it was most appropriate that his memorial was a magnificent stone trough. Calder, a commander in the Royal Navy, was a Scot who settled in Belfast. Across the street from the Albert Clock, you'll find St George's Church, a classical church of Ireland dating from 1816. The pillars that form the portico originate from North Africa and were originally brought by Earl Bishop of Derry, Frederick Augustus Hervey, for his palace at Ballyscullion on the shores of Loch Beg. The church was once surrounded by one of Belfast's oldest burial grounds, and it is here where Henry Joy McCracken the United Irishman who was executed just up the street in 1798 was originally interred. The church on the site was known in medieval times as the Chapel of the Ford, recalling the origins of the ancient town of Belfast, which translates from the Irish as the Sandbank Ford. It was replaced by a corporation church during the plantation of the early 17th century, where William III worshipped in 1690 on his way to the Battle of the Boyne and wooden chairs remain on which he was thought to have sat.